We are tracking rain on the radar for the first time in about a week and a half. Some strong storms possible tonight, followed by a drop in temperatures. We are heading into the 80s. And we are in the Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Todd Howell. Welcome back, Todd. Thank and you, John. Also, yeah. we're welcoming you back to 90s, which we felt, but we uh, haven't seen those rain showers in quite some time. Quite some time. Robin, you said a week and a half. Indeed, 11 straight days, dry days in a row. We need the rain, certainly. May get some storms tonight. Let's talk about that, and we'll talk about a cool down coming our way. Well, at least a little bit cooler temperatures, closer to average, starting tomorrow for Friday and hopefully beyond. Here's a look at radar and satellite overlaid. We're looking at those scattered thunder showers. One initial round is weakening up in Kentucky, but more convection is expected to redevelop back in Middle Tennessee and slide closer to the Plateau and Valley later this evening. So let's bring you up to date. Hope you're having a good Thursday. Good evening to you. Six o'clock straight up now. We're looking at that first round of showers weakening now, up Interstate 75. You still could have a little bit of wet pavement around Jellico, La Follette, Fincastle, and up toward uh, Bell County, Middlesboro, and Pineville. But for the most part, again, we're seeing those scattered showers having weakened. Still a little bit of ice isolated downpours around Oneida for you in Scott County, also down around Fairview in southern half of Scott County, but mainly dry elsewhere. We do have a marginal risk for some isolated severe storms, some damage and winds, small to medium sized hail possible this evening. So let's take a look at our high res future cast again between right now and 8 p.m. A new round of convection develops closer to the plateau and then between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. tonight that rolls off the plateau into the valley closer to Oak Ridge up toward La Folle at Maynardville uh, 10 to 11 p.m. closer to the valley in Knoxville could have a few stronger sails and into the mountains by midnight and then dissipating by early in the morning. But yeah, finally a chance for some rain and we'll talk about also some cooler temperatures coming our way in a moment. John and Robin back to you. Todd, thank you. The federal government says the hospital in Jamestown does not meet its standards, so it won't pay for Medicare or 10 care patients to be treated there. It is the latest problem for that hospital, which has a federal tax lien and millions of dollars in unpaid bills. The Jamestown Regional Medical Center is the only hospital in Fentress County. It is owned by Renova, a Florida company which also owns the hospitals in Oneida and Jellico. 10 News reporter Cole Sullivan is in Jamestown where some doctors say they don't feel it's safe to send their patients to that hospital. The federal government says the hospital behind me is low on basic supplies like needles and disinfectants and chest tubes. And that means that some doctors here in Jamestown are sending their patients 45 minutes away instead of trusting this hospital that's just up the road. Dr. Jonathan Allred has been admitting patients to the Jamestown Hospital for almost 27 years. But about a month ago, he says he stopped out of fear for their safety. I had probably over half of the departmental heads at the hospital tell me that supplies are critically low. The federal government says the hospital is running out of supplies like alcohol prep pads and batteries. I've heard IV tubings, uh, general IV uh, and needles, and all it takes is just the right scenario that somebody could get in trouble. The power was out in parts of the hospital for two days this month because it didn't pay its bills. But there is so many things going on that are disturbing. Instead of sending his patients here, Dr. Allred is referring them to Cookville, 45 minutes away. I've had several people this month that I would have admitted here at our hospital mm. that I have not. Now the feds say they won't pay for Medicare and 10 care patients to go to this hospital. It's the latest setback for parent company Renova, which also owns Big South Fork Hospital in Oneida. Jeff Tibbles is Scott County Mayor. He's been told his county's hospital isn't in the same situation as the one in Jamestown. There is always a concern when you're dealing with a company, a parent company, when one of its subsidiaries is going, they're not belly up. Obviously, they have a CMS shutdown or stopping of payment, which is pretty much a death sentence to a hospital. And doctors say it's a death sentence for the people here, too. If we don't have a hospital here, people are going to die. We sent Renova a list of questions about care at this hospital today, but didn't hear back. We have a lot more information about their financial situation on our website, WBIR.com. We'll send it back to you. Well, thank you now to developing news from Melton Hill Park in West Knox County. The Knoxville Volunteer Rescue Squad recovered the body of a man who jumped off a cliff into the water. The Knox County Sheriff's Office says crews responded at about 3.30 this afternoon. They say the man jumped in and did not resurface. They found his body about an hour after searching. The Sheriff's Office is investigating. Just into the newsroom, a man died in a motorcycle crash in Farragut. Troopers say 57-year-old Williard Berry died in that crash. 
It happened this afternoon on Kingston Pike at Old Stage Road. Troopers say Barry was driving west around a curve when he crossed into the eastbound lane and hit a guardrail. The impact threw him from his motorcycle. He was wearing a helmet. In mourning the loss of their son, one Knox County family is celebrating his gift that will save people, including four other people. 15-year-old Zach Monday died earlier this week. His family says he will be saving four lives through organ donation. Investigators are still looking into Zach's death, and they have released few details about the case. Now, we've heard from Zach's close friends, and 10 News reporter Stephanie Haynes today spoke to the pastor who baptized that young man. Stephanie? Robin and John, Pastor Brandon Blair met Monday last summer at a youth church event. He says it breaks his heart to see this death, but is comforted to know he's giving life to others. On Facebook, Monday's stepmother, Melissa Suarez Monday, posted that Zach will be saving four lives. She also shared a photo of a handwritten note that indicates Zach's heart would go to a 15-year-old boy, his liver to a 56-year-old man, and his kidneys to an 11-year-old boy and a 42-year-old man. Blair says this is a big sacrifice. Just to know that um, even his death is going to bring life to other people. Um, he's saving lives even through his death. Not only that, you know, his life has touched many different people. Blair said Monday always had a smile on his face and always said hi to him. He asked that people continue to pray and give support to the family and the community. And once Knox County deputies complete their investigation, they say they will turn it over to the Knox County District Attorney's Office. Robin and John. Stephanie Haynes with the update. Thank you. Right now, Tennessee Highway Patrol is looking for the person responsible for a deadly hit and run on Chapman Highway. Troopers say between 11:30 and 11:55 on the night of May 20th, a car hit and killed a man who was walking. It happened near Burnett Station Road in the Seymour area. Family members say Gary Allen Ellsworth II is the man who died. His wife tells us he was a wonderful husband and the father of six children. THB is looking for a 2013 to 2015 Ford Escape with front end and right side damage. Anyone with information is asked to call the number on your screen. Well, the city of Knoxville just lowered the speed limit on a stretch of Chapman Highway. The 1.7 mile section from Ellis Road to the city limits near Majestic Grove Road now has a 45 mile per hour speed limit. That's down from 50 miles per hour. The city says that makes the speed limit on Chapman Highway a uniform 45 miles per hour in the city limits. KPD is also conducting enhanced patrols along that road. We saw more officers there today. The changes come after a traffic engineering study. City leaders say speed is a factor in many of the crashes and they hope slowing traffic down will prevent more. Now it's important to note this study began before the December crash that killed 22 year old Pierce Corcoran. He was the son of Knoxville Fire Department Captain DJ Corcoran and his death again highlighted the safety of that road. Right now at WBIR.com, you can see our 10 News investigation into Chapman Highway, the number of deaths in the last 15 years, and why the city and TDOT don't agree on how to fix it. A woman from Oak Ridge is facing charges after investigators say she faked being a nurse to work at a local senior center. According to court records, Emily Barber used someone else's nursing license to get a job as a nurse at Summit View of Farragut. This was in October of last year. Investigators say she lied on her resume about her education and claimed to have a nursing license while she really just had a nursing assistant certificate. Barber has been charged with identity theft and impersonating a licensed professional. Monroe County is now a Second Amendment sanctuary. The county commission passed a resolution Tuesday to protect citizens from tighter gun laws. The symbolic measure states any regulation of the right to keep and bear arms shall be regarded by the people of Monroe County to be unconstitutional. It also says criminals who do not properly use guns do not obey laws, and that is not a reason to take away the gun rights of law-abiding citizens. We just wanted to be proactive it's a statement. It authorizes no funds from the county. We're not changing any laws, but we're just making a statement that we're, we're going to support our Second Amendment rights for our citizens. Resolution also says the county will not authorize or appropriate government funds, resources, buildings, or offices that infringe on the right to bear arms. 
Blunt County is a Second Amendment sanctuary county. The commission there voted on that resolution earlier this month. It says the county will not enforce any state gun control laws that it believes violate the right to bear arms. Polk County was the first in Tennessee to become one of those sanctuary counties. In Loudoun County, the Budget Commission is delaying any action as it considers a request from the sheriff that could mean a tax increase. Sheriff Tim Guider says his department needs more money to hire jail staff. That new jail opens in 2020. The sheriff also says they need to hire more patrol officers. He also asked for a pay raise for deputies, funding for two new school resource officers and a court security deputy. We, uh, we need to be competitive. And I, and I don't want to lose any more people. Uh, we've got good people. And uh, I, I think that needs to be addressed. The Budget Commission says to meet the request, the county would have to raise taxes. It says it wants to look more closely at the sheriff's request and other proposals before making any decisions. The Tennessee Highway Patrol is warning drivers about seeing more bears on the roads. The warning comes after a driver hit and killed a large adult black bear overnight in Kingsport. Troopers are again reminding everyone to stay alert behind the wheel. Appalachian Bear Rescue in Townsend is still caring for eight orphaned bears. We have some video of the five cubs wrestling in their enclosure this week. Curators there report the three older yearlings are trying to stay cool in the undergrowth there. Experts say now is the time mother bears are forcing their yearlings to begin life on their own. It's a necessary step for survival. This Saturday is the fourth annual Appalachian Bear Fest. It will be held from 11 to 3 at ABR Education Center in Townsend. There will be live music, a petting zoo, food as well as games for the kids. Black Bear experts will also be on hand to answer your questions and you can register at the Appalachian Bear Rescue's Facebook page.